It's time to try out our new Yoder smoker, and we're going to do that with a Boston butt, aka pork shoulder, aka pulled pork. So I wanted to give you guys like a quick rundown of how I do it. I've only got two rules about smoking. Number one, always prep the meat the day before. Number two, don't get wrapped around the axle about the rest of the details. First of all, for pork, like ribs or Boston butt, like to uh, coat it with uh, brown mustard, Dijon mustard, um, regular mustard. Again, see rule number two. And then I'll just pick any kind of seasoning, to be honest with you, because I've noticed it doesn't make that big a difference. In my household, voted me best smoker in the, in the house, so prob probably the expert. Now, some of the recipes you'll see online will tell you you've got to have this brown sugar and paprika and freshly ground this and all this stuff's got to be just right. See rule number two. Just pick a seasoning that you like and try it. It's not going to make all the difference in the world when this product's finished, I'll promise you. Now don't worry if you don't like mustard, because it won't be a mustard flavor once it cooks. It's kind of like onions. Onions don't taste the same cooked and raw. We'll put our seasoning on there, and you can't use too much. That's why it's called a rub. You rub it all over it. And if you think you've got too much, put a little more on. Now what you want to do is get yourself some cling wrap, saran wrap. I mean, I guess it depends what part of the country you're from, what you call this stuff. But the idea is wrap it nice and tight so it keeps that seasoning and mustard tight against the meat so you can store it overnight. Now my pro tip here is use one continuous piece of the wrapper if you can. That way, when you're out at the grill the next day, you don't have a bunch of pieces and parts you're trying to take off of your ribs or brisket or pulled pork or whatever it is that you're cooking. One continuous piece will come off of there, makes your life a little easier. We'll see that thing tomorrow. It's tomorrow. It's time to fire up this smoker. Pork butt needs to smoke at 250 for about eight hours to reach an internal temperature of 200 degrees. So you kind of need to backwards time that for when you want to eat before you put it on this guy. Now, next thing we need to do is make our mop. And that goes on about once every hour once we put the meat on the smoker. Honestly, you could probably skip the first hour um, just because the meat hasn't warmed up enough to start cooking through. So, fat side up, which is to uh, allow whenever it gets hot that when those fats start breaking down they're going to melt into the meat instead of just into your drip tray and that makes the meat taste way better. You want to make sure if you're using a meat probe, uh, temperature probe, 
that it doesn't make contact with the bone if the meat has any bone in it because those tend to conduct heat a little differently so you'll get false readings and you'll think your meat's done just because the bone's hot. All right, so it's time to make our mop, which we can do after we put the meat on the smoker. A lot of recipes call for a ton of maximum effort of stuff that you mix together. You can use anything from just apple cider vinegar to whatever seasoning that you used as your rub, or you can sit here and mix a bunch of stuff together if you like. And honestly, it doesn't even have to be apple cider vinegar. It can be beer or sparkling water or almost any liquid. It's basically just the conduit to get the seasoning that you want to stay on top and keep the meat from drying out. So we're gonna use about a half a cup of olive oil, which I put in this pot. And then there's a little bit more. Apple cider vinegar, another half a cup of that, roughly. Now you can use fresh ground pepper. I like fresh ground sea salt, preferably pink, for whatever reason. And where the hot salts go? Yeah, hot sauce. All right. Now, we're gonna want this to boil for like three to five minutes and then let it rest and then we'll start mopping whatever you have on, which we're doing pork butt, about once an hour until it's finished. Sorry about the winds picked up, it's like 90 miles an hour out here, but tucked in here, the grill's still keeping temperature. And I gotta say, I'm a little disappointed. I guess the way the Yoder measures the temperature is off to this side of the grill. So if you put your meat over there, even though I've got that damper thing all the way open, after seven hours, actually it's been eight and a half hours now, 179 internal temp in that pork butt. Now, I added it at 250 degrees for probably the first five hours, six, and I realized we're not gonna reach our goal, so I turned the temperature up 275 for the next couple of hours, and now I've got it turned way on up because I'm not really sure what the temperature is over here where our food is, but I'm guessing it's a good 50 or so degrees cooler, maybe not that much, but the meat's sure not heating up and it's been in there now eight and a half hours at at least 250 degrees on this side of the grill. So the crowd was happy, but we kind of had to delay a game there with how long it took to cook. So maybe I need to learn a thing or two about this Yoder. Food turned out great, just took way longer than expected. So perhaps I shouldn't have cooked it on the other side. Maybe I should have put the rack back in. Who knows? I'm gonna give it a seven. So I called and spoke to the good folks at Yoder today and we got the phone to connect because I just needed to unplug it and plug it back in, which may be odd since it was newly plugged in, but hey, it said it updated the firmware and the app connected and everything's good. Also sent me instructions to create a temperature variance on this thing by just low, laying the, essentially, just taking one probe and laying it somewhere in the middle and taking one probe and laying it out to the outside edge so it can measure the temperature of the grates and then we'll use the app uh, to read or to understand like what it's measuring in the back and what it's measuring on those two probes and create a variance so now we'll know how to look at the readout I guess and understand what temperature to set it to in order to achieve what we want out here on the far right side of the grill so pretty cool and I appreciate them knowing about their product and answering the phone and being able to speak English clearly. So, probably ends up as a win. First experience, maybe this video needs to be a kind of a how-to first time or something along those lines.
But anyway, thanks for watching. That's all. We'll see you later, y'all.